he stands in front of a tent. This is a 264 he's got here with a carving over the head of an Indian chief, and he was carrying it because that was the one he had in his hand in the vision when he shot that big bear. These horns here, those caribou horns, 42 inches. I had the privilege to go hunting up there, and we camped in the same area. Stayed in this tent about 18 days. About nine days we snowed in. We climbed up mountain right up through that gorge right up in there. And I'll tell you, when I got up there and looked down on the other side of it, wee down at the bottom, it looked like about the size of my thumb. There's a big old caribou. This, if I'm not mistaken, is up at Bud Southwick's in British Columbia, up at Muncho Lake, about mile 456. This is the camp. Where they're running, I'm sure it is, because those are the pack horses they're getting ready to go back into the wilderness with. This is the hunt that uh, Brother Fred killed that sheep on that you saw the uh, trophy mounted a moment ago. That's Oscar, the Indian boy. That's him with the. Uh, the goat either that Billy or, or Brother Fred one killed on the trip. Must be Brother Fred, he's there now. where Brother Don killed the nine foot silver chip grizzly bear and the uh, caribou. <laughs> Here he is with an Indian boy named Oscar from up there. Story about this Indian boy. Brother Billy Paul, Brother Bisco, and some other brothers had gone over some horses. Uh, they killed a caribou and they came back to camp and they got some horses and they took Brother Hurt Southwick's best horse to go out there and get the meat and bring it back to camp. When he got on out there, came across a bear scent and the horse spooked and got away and they came back and told Brother Bud and he lost a $700 horse. Called his about it and this brother stood around there for a little while and he finally said, Bud, don't worry about it. He said, I don't know when that happened, but he said, I see you. Taking a rope and going over the valley over and catching a horse over the next hill over. I said, the horse come over and nick her. Said, he come back. Said, you get him back. Said, don't worry about it. Less than an hour, they heard. Ah. Oh, you folks didn't recognize that. That's a horse. <laughs> and not a donkey. You know what a donkey sounds like? Here's what a donkey sounds like. The days of miracles are over. <laughs> supernatural anymore. The days of miracles are over. Hee-haw, uh, hee-haw, hee-haw. <laughs> what, don't I have a way of getting it in? <laughs> well, that horse snickered. That sounds like took a rope, my brother, went over to get the horse. This Indian sitting there, he said, you prophet, me lose horse. You tell Oscar where a horse is. Man in Bible, prophet tell where horses are, where those donkeys are. He said, you, you believe me to be a prophet? He said, well, all I can do is just pray and ask God. So he did, and he said, well, all I can tell you, Oscar, is I see your horse and two others in the snow. So when the, they didn't find the horse the year time of season, there was no snow here, so come springtime and the Indian didn't find his horse. He wrote him a letter and he said, me no find horse. His man had his son write him a letter back and say, all I can say is I saw your horse and two others in the snow. That Indian took it, he said, prophet say horses in snow, me go where snow. So he went where there was snow, high mountains, and found his horse and two others. And I was up there the next year when this man's sister, Louise, came out with the horse to show this prophet the horse that he'd seen in the